But it, it doesn't flow out all over the ground. It stays in the form. And the form that it goes into is a woman. Woman's face, anyways. Right. Well, okay, so there's I, that's a question. Now that we have reached the sliff and it didn't... It, it, wow, I can't talk. <laughs> now that we have reached the sliff and it's in this form, how do you picture the sliff? Because I have always thought big giant head. And I don't think that's right. I like I honestly think the way I picture it is very like not accurate at all to the way that the book describes it. But it's like, yeah, in the shape of a woman's face. Was that a piece of it or was that like the whole thing is her head? I think at least in this instance, they only talk about it being a face. At a so far, I do believe here in a second we might have it. It does, like, get a little bit bigger, but I think it's just a face right now. So, okay. So then, is this a face, like, if I were to look down into the well, flat, is the face bubbling up, like, from the well? No, it, yeah. It's or is through- it actually standing up and, like, pointed at Richard, who is standing next to the well? Yeah, I think it's 3D. Okay. So the head is is like upright, like a normal head would be. It's not yeah. like laying. It's not like a, a magic mirror right. where it's flat, right? Or like the nose and the lips are sticking up. Yeah, because that's what he says. It, it doesn't flow out. It doesn't explode out. It like goes. But it does into the stand up. Of a like the form of a face is what. It okay. Says. Okay. Okay. I was curious, and now I th- well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, because I was having trouble picturing it. It's so. It's so crazy. Fantastic. Yeah. So the slip says, Master, you wish to travel? And Richard is like, yeah, (laughs) that that sounds great. And it's like, okay, come on, let's go travel. And Richard's like, so how long is this going to take? Are we talking like a 30-minute little jaunt, or is this going to take like a two-hour, two-day thing? Like, let me know. What are we looking at Yeah, days, weeks, what gives? Because it's going to take a long time for him to, to just walk there. Yeah, this is probably going to be better than than any of that. He he's assuming, I guess, for no real reason at all. Well, no, I think he assumes because they never mentioned the the time it took to use the slift to get to the old world. He just knows that it did this thing. Yeah, but nobody that's true. made okay. any mention of like how long it took. So I think his immediate assumption is probably pretty fast. Yeah, and he when he asks her, she's like. From here to there, and I'm long enough. So, like, he assumes they never talked about time with her either. So it must not have been. Yeah, it's not even a concept she has. She's like, it takes the time it takes, dude. Yeah. Either you buy the ticket or you wait. You ain't riding. Or you walk, (laughs) which is somehow worse. So it's up to you. So the slip needs to determine if he's allowed to travel. And to travel, he needs both sides of the gift. So she figures out, okay, he has that. But, Does a little hand scanner thing, touches yeah, his see, forehead. Yeah, hand scanner. Takes his temperature. <laughs> he probably actually does have arms, because I think he does like do some type of dealy with him at that point. A little later, it does say that, it, it. well... We'll get there. He gets scooped. Yeah, he gets scooped. So I'm just, I'm assuming there's some type of extremities. And she looks like a woman's face, so she probably has <coughs> at least a torso coming out of this thing. Okay, so like a, a big half, like a bust, but down to the waist and with arms. Probably. Okay. We have not been told if, like, Richard didn't talk about her ass, so we don't know if that's out or not. We also know that this well is like 20 feet wide. Yeah. And we're in a very big room. Yeah. So it could be that it's just much larger than I'm picturing it too, and it's like a woman coming out of this well. Yeah. Like a, I... like a giant size. Very big. Yeah. See, but he doesn't say big, big either. Much big. <laughs> it, he talks about it being quicksilver and like the texture. He doesn't talk a whole lot about like the actual size or of it or the way it looks, other than it being a woman's form. So okay, well, if it says woman's form, and you know, I'm not, I'm not quoting you exactly, but if it's like that, then I would imagine it is probably most of a woman, like. If the well was full, she'd be standing on top of yeah. the Quicksilver I was not sure deal. at what point he says that, because I know he says face at first. So I don't know. Whatever. I think it's just woman. Woman-esque. Whatever you want yes. to picture. Okay. Not that, you pervs. 
Well. Sorry. <laughs> so Richard determined that to get to Kalen, he needs to drive his sword into the stone so that nobody can get it. He has to keep it safe. You know, there's all these Mariz with that he trusts explicitly running around the keep, but yeah, can't have them touching it. So yeah, gonna, not that much. Yeah, we're going to sword in the stone it and leave it there to keep it safe, which seems like it would not be good for the, the sword. I know it's magical, but I feel like... Yeah, I had a problem with him dragging it on the ground or, you know, putting it into the ground before I did the whole blade be true this day. Yeah. And because you're not supposed to do that and you're really not supposed to do this. Yeah. So I think we're just going to have to chalk up that whole thing to Magic Sword. Hi, Loki. Our dog's barking. Yeah, excuse him. (laughs) So Richard at this point climbs up onto the well. So he's like on the edge of it. And the Rizwith is like, yo, if you you leave your sword, you're not going to have a weapon. So here, take my Yabri because we're buds and I want you to have something to protect yourself. Which is good because at first when he left the sword, I was like immediately, you got a knife, right? At least. Right. I hope. Fucking hope. Or did he forget it again? Right. (laughs) But we then know, we know where that leads. But then my other thought is, th- this fucking Marizwith knew for sure he was gonna need that Yabri, and they haven't even had a discussion. Like he's gotta save the queen, so I guess it's implied. But I'd be like, what do you know? Why do I need this? You know what it's like when Give you me gotta do info. some shady shit, and you're like, hey man, my gun's registered. Let me use yours. Uh, I get it, but I I would <laughs> like. You seem like you have some knowledge, Mariz, with because you're giving me a weapon to go here and you're talking about saving the queen. Can oh, you- you'd be like, what am I getting into? Yeah. What do you Please know? Please explain. Yeah. Yeah. What's happening over there? That would have been nice. Yeah. Well, especially that the guy's smiling while giving it to him. Yeah. The Yabri will sing. What? You're happy? You. I don't want to go fight. Like, this isn't something like gay I wanted to do today. So, can you just explain to me what the fuck's going to happen when I get there? <laughs> What am I getting into? Yeah. Like, I get, maybe I'm going to have to fight, that, but do you have any more specifics than that? That would be cool. Any details? Yeah. I, I'm on a mission. I need details. I'm about to do some stuff. Going to need details about that, too. <laughs> need some deets. So, realizing what he's about to do, he tells the Sliff that he needs to be able to breathe while they travel. He's like, hey, I, I'm jumping in there with you. How the, f- <laughs> how the fuck is this going to work? And she's like, you just have to breathe me. It's gonna be you sh- just get into me, Richard. Yeah. Just get in me and then do it. Just do it. That's all you got to do to do it is just, just be it. in me. Yeah. It'll be fine. <laughs> what? And then breathe me in. It's a whole yeah. thing. It's a whole thing. But he, he's, like, <laughs> he's like, pants? No, no, no. You got not that. <laughs> um, I'll figure it out. He's like, er, she tells him that it's super scary. It's going to be terrifying. She's, he's not going to think it's going to work, but he has to do it or he's going to die. <laughs> And then, sorry, I'm immature. <laughs> <laughs> and then, once he gets out of the slip, he has to breathe the air. It's going to feel the same way. He's not going to feel like he's going to be able to breathe the air. Yeah. He's going to want to breathe the slip. But if he doesn't do that, he's going to die. He's going to suffocate either way. I would be having a panic attack at this point. Like, I'm, I don't think I want to do this. Start to suffocate before you even did the thing that makes you feel like you're going to die. Right. Right. <laughs> Oh, I do that all the time. It's called a panic attack. No big deal. I got this. Do the opposite of what your brain is telling you to do. Okay. I got that too. (laughs) Still barking. (laughs) So Richard takes a deep breath as the sliff picks him up and pulls him down into the well. He has decided to to go right in. He's going to breathe in the sliff and... uh, Take as you breathe and go save Kaylin in the old world. We don't know where in the old world. No, Just, did not specify. We are going to the old world. Which, uh, I think I was on Facebook the other day when somebody mentioned that they have a, a, a plot hole with this book. And I didn't ask for specifics, but I think it has to do with when, like, what we just witnessed with Richard going into the Slif, and I believe, I might be wrong, but I believe there's something here that's considered an error. Something weird. Something that Terry did that's like something to do with the rules of the Slif, I think. 
um, that didn't, it doesn't go down this way for the rest of the series. Something happened here that's unique. When I he believe. Goes in? Yes, with him going in with the interaction that they just had. Now, I, I might be wrong, so I don't think we have to go any further into it right now. Um, but I, I know for a fact that we are going to be discussing that on the live episode on Patreon. Okay. For sure. Okay. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And that's the end of our chapter. So Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Richard uh, pictures the woman who drowned trying to save her child. That's the last thing he thinks of before he goes into the slip, which, which he- is... Like we were talking about this before we started to record. It's it's we noticed that he acknowledges that he's breaking the wizard's first rule. And then the last thought he has before actually breaking the wizard's third rule. I said first, I meant third. Yeah. Um, is he's like, yeah, just like that lady who did it. Yeah. He's doing the same thing. Yeah. He's he's definitely bro- like passion is ruling reason currently right now for sure (laughs) that kind of led me to the question so is richard trying to i don't know what he's trying to do exactly but it seems to me like he is trying to exist in a space where you have to be mindful of the wizard's third rule but this is necessary if he's aware of the fact that he's breaking that rule is he trying to say yeah yeah passion rules reason but like sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Or is that just another example of the rule? Like, of course, you're going to feel that way. Of no. course, Richard wants to go save Kalen, but he's still breaking the rule to do it. I think it's an example of it because we don't get a good example of um, finding reason. Like if he ex- if he was actively being like, this is my only fucking option. I can't take the army down there with me. I can't take you know, fucking two months to go to the old world or however long it's going to take. I just can't. This is my only option. And I'm taking all the precautions necessary beforehand by, like, making sure all my people here are set for the Lord Which Wall to take doing. off. He did, Yeah, right. So if he checked all the boxes... And he went alone again. Right. If he checked all the boxes of, of being reasonable, then he wouldn't be breaking the f- third rule. I think uh, because he didn't, he is ruling reason right now with his passion because he's just rushing headlong into it. Yeah. Without, like, I'm not saying that maybe he has any other option, but there were a couple things I feel like he could have done before he just took the fuck off. Just decided to do what he did. Yeah. All right. All right. I was, I was curious about that, but yeah, what you say makes sense to me, but that's, that's Richard. If anybody's going to do it, like he's going to do it. Yeah. That's Richard. Wah, wah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank each and every single one of you personally for listening to this episode. I still want you to reach out to us, though. You can let us know what you thought about this episode or our humble little show in general by sending an email to podcast att at gmail.com. You can follow us on all of the social medias. We are around, you know, yeah, we know the interwebs too. We're cool. Kind of. <laughs> or if you wanted, like we mentioned earlier, uh, you can hop on patreon.com slash podcast ATT and make a pledge there. All pledge at any level uh, gets access to everything that we post on Patreon. Plus, um, we're going to be doing the live episode soon. The dog is still barking. Love you, Loki. <laughs> and those are always a lot of fun so we hope to see you guys there but yes that does it for us for tonight we hope you are all well thank you all for listening and we'll see you real soon <laughs> bye bye